There are so many concerns for expecting parents or parents of newborns that in some cases, not all of the preventable illnesses are discussed. Today we're learning the facts about congenital cytomegalovirus. Here with details is Lisa Saunders, a parent who lived through the virus with her daughter, alongside Dr. Brenda Balch, who is part of the Connecticut American Academy of Pediatrics Early Hearing Detection and Intervention Chapter. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, doctor, I think first off we need to explain what the virus is. Sure. Uh, CMV, or uh, cytomegalovirus, is a virus that all of us um, usually get at some point during our lives, but it's usually silent. We don't even know that we've contracted it, and we have no consequences from it. The concern is when a um, pregnant woman uh, develops uh, cytomegalovirus during her pregnancy, or if a person is compromised with her immune system, then it can have serious consequences. Um. I don't know about this. What, why is that? Why, do we, why have we never heard about this? Well, that's one of the reasons that we're here today mm -hmm. is to try to educate the public about cytomegalovirus. Um, unfortunately, less than 20% of men and women in the United States are aware of cytomegalovirus. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is increase public education. Um, so what is it that uh, expectant moms should know about this? Well, cytomegalovirus, if you do contract it during your pregnancy, it can cause serious problems. Uh, hearing issues, vision problems, a small brain, neurological problems, uh, seizures, etc. So there are a lot of potential negative consequences. The majority of babies, even if their mother does contract it during pregnancy, will not have um, problems associated with it. But there are things that you can do to prevent cytomegalovirus transmission. And the things that you can do is while you're pregnant or shortly before you plan on becoming pregnant, is to make sure that you're doing good hand washing around toddlers um, when you change diapers, when, because it's a human-to-human -human contact, and it's usually through bodily fluids. So to avoid um, um, getting bodily fluids, uh, contaminating yourself with bodily fluids is very important. Got it. And Lisa, we'll bring you into the, the conversation here. You lived this with your daughter, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. uh, she made it till she was 16 years old, but tell us a little bit about her. Um, well, I ran a daycare center in my home. I lived in Maryland at the time. Mm -hmm. I was a licensed daycare provider, so I went through all the things that the government makes you do to become mm -hmm. licensed, and nowhere in the literature does it say that um, women of childbearing age should be you know, mindful of cytomegalovirus. Mm -hmm. um, we have some pictures up. I think oh, it's yeah, you it's and uh, girl. Elizabeth there. <laughs> yeah. Actually, this is right before she's about to have a seizure. We uh, went to New York to uh, to my parents because I had to. She had to endure several su surgeries. Mm -hmm. um, she was born severely disabled because I caught it. Um, women who are work in daycare are more susceptible to it, and if you have a toddler in daycare, because you're okay. not supposed to kiss your toddler on the mouth or share cookies with them, oh. especially if they're in daycare. Um, I didn't know any of this. But anyway, Elizabeth was born severely disabled, as you can see from her pictures. Mm -hmm. um, we knew immediately, because she had a very small brain when she was born, very small head. But this is ultimately preventable if you do have the information, if you do know about it. Right. If I knew about it, if I had known about it, maybe what I would have done is not do daycare <laughs> well, sure. for um, young children in my home, especially. Mm -hmm. um, because remember, when you're picking up toys, it's all I over. They're dirty. I get it, right? Right. Because that's why children two and a half or younger are the majority of the ones spreading it. Because mm -hmm. um, they're mouthing toys and slobbering over each other. Sure. Um, so I might not have done daycare in my home, or if I had known about it, I wouldn't have picked up toys and then grabbed an apple. I might have maybe oh, even sure. worn rubber gloves to pick up toys. I might have, well, you it's know. It's just so important to get that information yeah, out now. Yeah, you just now. need to really wash your hands. And there like I said, go. nobody really realizes you shouldn't be kissing your toddler around the mouth because they reach go. up to you with those cute little lips. But if they're in daycare <laughs> and you're about to become pregnant or are pregnant, you really just need to kiss their cheek. Got it. Uh, and you wrote a memoir to go along with this. Tell us about your book. Yes. Uh, anything but a dog, I decided I didn't want to write a depressing story because once I got over the shock of her condition, I didn't dwell on it because you want to be a happy family. You want to move forward. I had a husband. I had another daughter. So it's really a story of how I came out of depression and realized, okay, let's just move forward. Mm -hmm. And I had typical problems like any typical mother because my older daughter wanted a dog. She said, um, you know, can we have a dog? And I said, 
no, because I'm worried it's a dog could accidentally hurt my daughter, Elizabeth, who was, Sorry. her cerebral palsy was so severe, she was quadriplegic. She can't protect herself from a dog that might jump on her right. or whatever. And my older daughter was so upset, because no, she, first of all, she doesn't have a sister who can play with her. She didn't dwell on that, but she wants an animal to play with. Of course, with. it makes sense. And uh, so I said, no, not unless God brings one to our door can you have one. And I have a hunch that's what happened. <laughs> and God does have a sense of humor. But it took years. We yeah. had one dysfunctional pet after another that were really inappropriate <laughs> for my handicapped daughter. Sure. One, a cat really seriously scratched up her face. Oh. Um, you know, there were... It's all adventures in the book, right? It's we really, read. like I said, it's lighthearted adventures because I want you to move forward with me. You can go on and have a happy life sure. and, and, and work it out, you know? And where can we find your book? It'll be online mostly, sure. uh, go, go Amazon or through the publisher, Unlimiting, Unlimited Publishing. Great. Um, you can find it there. So for, and Dr. Leslie, no vaccine yet for any of this? They are working on a vaccine. Uh, several uh, pharmaceutical companies are working on a vaccine, and we're hoping that with more education about CMV, mm -hmm. that work will, will move forward more quickly. Very good. Well, I want to thank you both for being here. Of course, you can find information over on the CDC website. We'll link it up to our website, uh, WTNH.com.